Are you ready to make 2020 your best year yet? Well, today, we gonna make it happen. What up, homie? My name's Dave, and I put up new videos every Tuesday and every Friday to help you get the girls you want and become the man you're meant to be. Now, first off, I just wanna give a quick thank you to all the awesome dudes who joined the free Confident Casanova Facebook group this week. We got a real strong community of 200 plus guys. If you're looking for some support on your journey of dating success and you really wanna connect with some other like-minded guys, hit the first link in the description to join the group. You're gonna to get to interact with me and all and, and a bunch of other awesome like-minded guys and everyone's gonna crush it. So hit that first link, check it out. Anyway, man, your habits play a huge part into what type of guy you become, as well as how attractive you are to those high quality, sexy women. If you want more dates and just to generally feel on top of your game in every area of your life, well, your habits need to be on point. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. I'm gonna give you my five best habits to change your life in 2020. Let's get into it. Remember those days, those L's, I could sleep right now. I get paid, fake games, stay in peace. I'm breaking the blues over steak, I gotta eat right. So we all have slumps, right? Like, I've had a few of them over the past couple of years, and they suck. It makes it really hard to get anything done. It makes you feel like you're not making any progress, and it can bring you into a real dark time. But one way I found to combat slumps and even to prevent them from happening in the first place is to have a lot of positive mini habits that you can do throughout each day. These are habits that don't take much time, like really at most a couple of minutes each, but they help you to develop that positive momentum so you never feel like you're not making any progress at all because you know you're gonna wake up, you're gonna do this, this, and this, and you're gonna be ready to be on your grind and start making something happen. So what are these mini habits? Well, here are a few that I've had a lot of success with. First is flossing. A little trick with this is to just go in with the mindset that you're gonna floss one tooth, and once you get in there and start flossing that one tooth, you're gonna wanna floss all of the teeth, but having that initial buy-in with one tooth is what's gonna get you to go up, to go ahead and actually do it. Next is daily gratitude. So basically, grab your notebook right when you wake up, write five things you're grateful for, and just spend a minute or two thinking about it and really just actually being grateful for them. Way too often we're focused on everything that we lack in our lives and we just have this whole mentality of lack, lack, lack. But when you you know, focus on what you're grateful for, that's how you start developing that abundance, which is really gonna help you with women too. A Couple other ones are making a bed and cleaning your room. This is just gonna give you a clean living space. It's real easy to do at the beginning of the day, make you feel like you've already accomplished something and get you started off on the right foot. So many words left unspoken Cause we never understood That we get one chance to make it right Man, we live in a world where everyone's always texting on their phone, sending messages, getting offended about random shit. And it's real easy to feel isolated, right? Like, you're just not a social person because a lot of people aren't out there interacting. And that's why it's, it's so important to have a social habit and really to be social every single day. That way, when you do see a beautiful girl and you do have opportunities to talk to girls, you're not gonna freak out because you haven't talked to anyone for, for a week or something, right? You're gonna be prepared. So in order to be social every day, some things you can do are, when you go in and check out at a register, smile at the cashier, maybe start some small talk, ask her how her day is going. Be genuine about it. When you're walking down the street and you see a pretty girl, try to make some eye contact with her and give her a little smile, let her know what's up. And finally, try to approach at least one girl every single day. They could be at the coffee shop, could be walking to work, could be at the gym, really anywhere that these girls go up when you see an opportunity and make it happen. By making approaching and being social a normal part of your day, it's not gonna feel like such a big thing. You're not gonna fear rejection as much. You're not gonna have that pit in your stomach that so many guys do when they have this approach anxiety and when they see these beautiful girls. So, it's gonna get you ready. I'm all alone in my hotel room. I'm getting drunk on booze from the mini bar. I so a lot of guys have problems with jerking off and looking at porn far too much, right? And the insidious part about it is that it tricks your brain into thinking that you're having success with girls when you're really not. So you might go out on a Friday night, not get anything, come home at 2 a.m. and just let it loose, and you feel good for a minute, 
But let's be honest, bro. In the aftermath of looking at porn and sitting there, you got some dirty tissues on top, it's never like a great feeling, right? You're never like, man, I'm happy I did this. What a great experience that was. And another thing to keep in mind is that jerking off to a lot of porn can also be a cause of erectile dysfunction so that if you do get things going with a girl or you know, let's say you're even jerking off and you have a girlfriend, the sex is not gonna be as good and you might not be able to even get it up, which is really embarrassing in its own right. So how do you stop jerking it? Well, it's a journey, man. I know it's, it's not easy to stop, especially if you've been doing it for years and years and years, like a lot of guys have been, but I'll tell you what's worked for my students and I in the past. First off, it's to get an accountability partner. So maybe you hit up one of your, one of your best buddies and say, Hey bro, I'll be honest, I've been jerking it off the porn way too much lately. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to completely stop, but if I slip up, I'm gonna pay you $50. That way you know, if you pull down those pants and let it loose the porn hub, then you're gonna have to pay $50 out of your bank account. Another thing you can try to do is replace it with a better habit like meditation, which is a good one, or even you're watching a movie. Just, just anything to kind of get your mind off the idea of letting it loose. And the last thing I recommend doing is getting on your grind. Like bro, if you have like three, four extra hours in your day where you're not doing anything, that's a sign that you might need to be focusing a little bit more on your purpose. You need to fill that time with something, with something valuable, right? If, if you have too much time on your hands, you're gonna end up doing something else with your hands that probably is not gonna benefit your life. I can feel my body, you cold against the concrete, but I can't seem to get enough. My mind is fixed on what it wants. I just let you be. So I'll be honest, bro. I used to think that you could eat whatever you wanted, as much food as you wanted, as long as you were working out consistently. But as I've grown older, I've realized that that's not really true. And if you have a really shitty diet, it doesn't really matter how much you work out. You're gonna start putting on too much weight. You're not gonna look as good as you could. And you're certainly gonna feel like shit too. That's why I recommend roughly tracking your calories in 2020. Now I'm probably not gonna go and track my calories for every single meal of every single day. It's just not that doable. I'm probably gonna get lazy with it and I'm guessing the same is true with you. But what's a lot better and a lot easier is to take, let's say your 10 to 20 most eaten meals between like breakfast, lunch, and dinner and figure out what the calorie content is of, of those meals. Cause we all have certain go-to meals that we eat most weeks, right? Once you know the calorie content of those meals, it's gonna be a lot easier to tell what your daily calories are based on what meals you eat. And then whether you're bulking in the gym or you're cutting down, you're gonna know, okay, I need to eat 2,200 calories today. So if I eat this chicken pasta, then I can do that with like this meal and this meal and I'm gonna be under my calorie limit and I'll be good to go. Then aside from this, try cutting out the junk food snacks that we all like to eat a little bit too much. I know for me, like junk food snacks, like Sour Patch Kids, maybe some chocolate chip cookies, they're my guilty pleasure. I, it's really hard for me to resist them, but I got a little slogan, no snacks 2020, no snacks for at least January. I'm trying to cut down in January, trying to get a little bit of fat off my belly, let that six pack show a lot more. So if you're trying to do the same, then I recommend cutting out those snacks too. The more well-rounded of a dude you are, the more self-aware of a guy you are, the better you're gonna be at having good conversations, meeting new people, and it's really gonna increase your attractiveness to these high-quality girls too. So. How do you increase those things? How do you increase that self-awareness? How, how do you become a well-rounded guy? Well, a great way to do it is to spend at least 30 minutes a day feeding your brain. We just talked about feeding your body, but your brain needs that nutrition too, bro, and you feed it with knowledge. Now, this isn't something you need to plan for, like, oh, I'm gonna wake up and do this for 30 minutes. This is something you can do throughout your day, like while you're washing the dishes, while you're even taking a shower or while you're driving to work, you can throw on a podcast like two of my favorites right now are the Joe Rogan podcast and uh, Theo Vaughn's podcast. Both are great for seeing how they hold conversations, seeing you know what topics, what topics are going on in the world right now and you know 
making you more well-rounded. And a quick little snippet thing I like to listen to each day is the Daily Stoic Podcast by Ryan Holiday. I really like it because it's like two to three minutes of Stoic philosophy broken down for you each day. And it really helps you look at life and look at your day in a better perspective when you listen to it. But it doesn't just have to be podcasts or little Stoic snippets, right? It can also be things like stand-up comedy on Netflix because that's gonna help you develop your sense of humor, help you to make girls laugh, and help you to be a better communicator. Now bro, all these habits are gonna help you crush it in 2020, but if you wanna know some other great habits that are gonna help you to talk to girls like a boss, then check out this video right here. Let's keep it going. I'll see you right there, homie.